Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms, and today I want to talk to you about a piece of uh, older hardware that I have here that I still use every day. And uh, matter of fact, the reason I decided to make this video is because I, I, I had to take it offline for a little while for the first time in probably close to a year. I took it offline to do what's probably going to be its final upgrade. But uh, this is a Panasonic CF29 Toughbook. Uh, these tough books have been around for a long time. Military ruggedized laptops. Uh, Panasonic makes them. I think Motorola makes the M919. And there might be one other brand out there. I don't know. But I picked this up at a uh, flea market a couple years ago. And it was perfect for my needs. And it's still working uh, incredibly well. As you can see by this picture here, here's the specs it has. Uh, we're looking at a Pentium 3M 1.6 gig, which is pretty pretty decent for its era. The upgrade that I just did on it today is this this where the memory has been upgraded to two gigabytes. Um, yeah, these were not really designed to take that much. Max was supposed to be 1.5 uh, on the earlier models and 1.2 on the later models. So it's nice to be able to get a full two gigabyte out. And that's because this is a Mark V model. Anyway, uh, as you can see here, the ports that it has on it. And one of the things that makes the Panasonic Tough Book so tough is not only that it's uh, you know shockproof and kind of drop proof to some great extent, but on these sides here, all the ports are covered. As you can see on this side here, I've got my uh, power cord, USB cord, phone, and uh, also Ethernet uh, card there. And that other flap door uh, drops down to... Uh, show that it has an SD card slot, which is kind of a neat thing that it came equipped with. Also has a spot for uh, your PCM uh, uh, card. Now on the other side, I've got uh, floppy drive bay, uh, and obviously not using floppies that came with that. You can upgrade this to a DVD drive if you'd like, but it, it, I didn't really ever find the need for that. Now on the back, and I've removed the cover, I still have it, but on the back you have some of your other ports, another USB port, serial parallel, uh, and a video port over here. So that's pretty much it. You've got this nice handle that snaps back into place here on the front. Your power switch is over here. And uh, it has a pretty good latch here to keep it from opening up. Uh, let me go ahead and open it up. Keyboard is really nice. It's a very basic setup. It's obviously waterproof. It's ruggedized. It's like a military-grade laptop. And uh, it's backlit, which I really like a lot. This part here, you know, your, your regular trackpad and your, and your mouse button. No need to really get into that. Um, but overall, very durable feeling, very very uh, sturdy device. Obviously, it's rated for military police, that kind of stuff. So uh, let me move the screen up, and I'll show you what I'm doing with this thing. Because, uh, oh, I haven't had this thing off the shelf in probably eight or nine months. But uh, here it is. Uh, as you can see, I've got uh, the Farpoint Farms webpage loaded up here. Now, this is uh, Firefox. Well, let me get, let me back up. So this is Windows XP version SP3. So I've got all the updates on there. I've changed the registry so it continues to receive critical updates and safety updates all the way through the end of 2019 because it thinks it's a point of sale uh, version of Windows XP. So if you're going to continue to use XP and you want to get uh, those, those updates, that's the little trick and there's a way to do that. And that's been done to this. So Obviously Chrome is no longer updated by Windows XP and neither is Internet Explorer. So what you're seeing here is Firefox. I don't use Firefox on any of my other computers, but uh, it works quite well on this. And it's been operational for over 10,000 hours now. Uh, most of that just sits on the shelf and does its thing, which we'll get into, but that's pretty impressive. So anyway, back to the, the screen here. YouTube works. Uh, you can go you know, do things like uh, you know, go to different websites. Here's one on CB Radio we can go to. eBay works. Uh, it's usable for all that stuff, and I do use this for internet connectivity occasionally. Uh, usually it's just to download more music uh, for the, uh, well, I'll get into that later, but download music or files related to music onto the system. Um, so let me go ahead and I'll close that. So, so uh, you know, it, uh, beneath it all, it looks just like any other version of uh, Windows XP. Now you'll see here I have a program uh, loaded. This also is not running because it's not hooked up right now. But this is Winamp, and uh, the reason I have Winamp loaded on this computer is that its main function, while it sits outside, is to is twofold. It runs a Part 15 AM radio station, and it also simulcast using that Winamp program and, uh, and a Winamp uh, Shoutcast server program. It broadcasts live over the web on a Shoutcast uh, station. So 
that's pretty cool. And you would think that a computer of this era probably wouldn't have enough horsepower to do that, but you'd be wrong. I can have up to 25 simultaneous connections to the radio station and uh, plays fine. Plus, again, it's transmitting out onto a 1670 AM band here in the mountains of North Carolina, so uh, it broadcasts as well. It splits the signal. Works exceptionally well. Now, I also do live shows for uh, both Shoutcast and the AM station, and when I do that, I use this program here called Audacity, and I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's a free program that's available online to record the sessions live. So <laughs> when I'm doing that, i got three things going on on this little computer. It's recording a show, it's, uh, it's broadcasting the show, and it's also broadcasting the show over the Internet. And uh, with a small mixer board that I have uh, hooked up to this thing when I do live shows, we can take calls, we do all that stuff. So pretty amazing for a piece of technology that's, uh, by anyone's standard, probably obsolete. But wait, there's more. <laughs> that's right, because why just have it sitting there killing CPU cycles and sitting out there in the garage doing nothing for most of its life just playing music when it can also do one more thing? And so I have it set up to do one more thing, and that is this. It is also a Synchronet terminal. Synchronet is a BBS, and bulletin board system. Now, these were popular before the Internet. For a while, they ran uh, concurrently alongside or parallel to the Internet, but eventually they were completely replaced by the Internet. And that doesn't mean they're not useful, and, and this one uh, is useful. This is, this is a closed system, but I've been thinking about opening it up to, uh, to the world. But uh, with this, uh, family and friends with names and passwords that you provide for them or that they sign up and get themselves can log in to message boards, uh, send private emails, write private messages or public messages, and uh, transfer files back and forth between folks. So this is a way for me to keep in contact with close family and friends, and it bypasses the Internet. Now, I do have this set up uh, in Telenet, which is Telnet, I'm sorry, and that allows you to uh, access this any, part, any place in the world over the Internet. Should it become necessary for me not to have this on the Internet, that's what the modem port was for. This still has a 56K modem. You can hook it up to an analog phone line, and you can have this working over the old-school phone line dial-up type routine. So that's kind of a neat function. So anyway, this doesn't get a ton of use. It's there. People do log in from time to time. Uh, right now, of course, no one's online. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And uh, people log on to that. And while I'm transmitting to the world and transmitting through Shoutcast, I'm also uh, running that server there. So this little booger can do a whole lot of cool stuff. <laughs> That's it. I'm Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms. I hope you enjoyed this little review of the Panasonic CF29. It's a great laptop. Obviously, I've shown you that an older laptop like this is still quite useful for the right projects, for the right things. Now, I'm not going to be editing any 4K videos on this little device, but for the stuff that I've set it out to do, it does it great, and it actually still has uh, room to spare as far as memory goes uh, now with this last upgrade. So I might use it for one or two more things. Who knows? Maybe I'll run an FTP server out there or something. Uh, now, I will make separate videos coming up on the whole shoutcasting, the whole AM Part 15, AM broadcasting, and uh, the BBS stuff. Uh, because I want to share that with you, too. Some of you may not be aware those things even exist. And, of course, probably after watching this video, go out and Google some of that stuff. But I'll show you my setup, and I'll show you how I do it. And I'll also talk a little bit about why I do it. But that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, perhaps you will think about liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Take care.